Hello, welcome back to our new lesson. Today we'll be covering coordinate geometry. Uh, this is one of those topics that uh, that occurs about not that frequently on GI, but you will you can expect about two to three questions. Uh, the concepts here are quite simple, uh, but as in many other areas in GRE, the questions can be tricky. So application of the concept is the key, right? So so there are <clears throat> three four main things I guess that I, I would like you to know uh, in this topic. First is how to I guess read an xy plane and also how to use information that's given by an xy plane. Uh, second is using distance formula which is very simple in application. Third is intercepts. And fourth is lines and slopes. Okay. So in this part, we'll do one and two, and in lecture, in the in B part of this uh, uh, this lecture, we'll do the two, uh, three and four. All right. So let's get started with x y plane. Alrighty. X y plane. Okay. So XY plane is basically a way to represent uh, like a special uh, special variation uh, kind of a graphically. Okay. So, so basically what you have is you have two lines. One line is horizontal, the other is vertical, and they make an angle of 90 degrees with each other. Okay. Uh, the horizontal line is known as the x-axis. And the vertical line is known as the y-axis. Okay. So these two lines together basically make your xy plane. So what can you do in xy plane? Well, in xy plane, you can say, okay, I have a point that's here, right? Um, and there are ways to represent this point exactly, so that when you're referring to the point, you don't, you can. Give it uh, some numbers and especially we tell you okay, the point is there. Um, all right. So, so to be able to do that, you know the exact uh, exact location of a point in your plane. What you do is you number your axes. So let's see. The point where your two axes intersect, this point, is known as the origin, and it's given a value of zero. Now, if you take your horizontal line, the x-axis, you can basically number it like a regular number line. So you can mark 1 here, 2 here, 3 here, 4, and so on and so forth. So on the right of your origin, you basically mark it as positive, just like a regular number line. On the left, you mark it as negative. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. Now similarly on the y-axis you can do the same thing, so going in like top direction, going above uh, uh, above your origin, basically you have your positive numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and going below you have your negative numbers, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Now, if you want to locate a point uh, in this xy plane, what you basically do is, let's say I have a point here, somewhere here. So you, the way you locate it is you find the value on the x-axis, which is here, right, about 3, and then you find the value at the y-axis, which is about 2. So basically, you find the x and y value of this point on your axis, and you put it together in this form, which is known as an ordered pair. Okay, so your x value, your y value. So in this case, your x value is three and your y value is two, right? So in this way, you can locate any point in this plane. So let's say I have a point here whose uh, x value is negative two and the y value is negative four, okay? So this point is negative 2, negative 4. 
Okay, simple and easy and straightforward, right? Okay, so now you might have seen that all your values that lie in here, so in, in this quadrant, so there are four quadrants here. You have this quadrant, right? Let me just put it there. So this is known as the first quadrant, one. Then you have your second quadrant over here. This is the second quadrant. Third one, which is here. And the fourth quadrant, which is, let me find a good color for it. Okay, I'll use the green again which is over here so that's your fourth quadrant now all your values in the first quadrant you'll see are positive right so the first quadrant all values are positive so which by by all values i mean the x value as well as the y value both are positive so let me write it over here first quadrant my x is positive my y is positive now in the second quadrant you can see over here your x becomes negative right so now your x's are negative but your y's they are still positive okay similarly in the third quadrant your x is again negative you are again over here when you look at a point here you're still using this x but your y has now also become negative okay so both are negative and in your fourth quadrant right over here your x is positive you are all the positive x numbers and your y is the negative so you have positive and negative so this is good to know like you know right off the bat you know if you have a point here you know x is negative y is positive if you have a point here you know x is positive y is negative here everything is negative here everything is positive okay all right next we'll look at the distance formula distance formula so distance formula is a short way to find the distance between two points on your coordinate plane so if you have your xy plane you have one point here and another point here let's say so you have point a and point b and you find to find the distance between a and b right so let's say a has coordinates x1 comma y1 and B has coordinates x2, comma y2. Okay, so the distance between these two points is basically given by square root of the difference in the x values. So x1 minus x2 square plus the difference in the y values square. Okay. Now, now the order of values here doesn't represent, doesn't matter. So you can instead of having x1 minus x2, you can also write x2 minus x1. And the reason being that you are squaring it, so whatever uh, the the difference is, it, it gets squared anyway. So positive or negative value doesn't matter. Okay, so a, a pretty simple formula. Just plug in the values and move on. All right. So let's do a problem that uses all these information. Okay, so here's one. It's the quantitative comparison question. You have your x y plane. Let me change the color of my pen. Okay, so you have your x y plane and you have this uh, diagram here, right? So it says quantity A, the perimeter of quadrilateral A B C D. So A B C D. You have this figure, four sided figure. You want to find its perimeter. Perimeter is just the sum of all sides. Um, and then B, you're comparing that with the area of the shaded region. All right, uh, which is again just the area of this quadrilateral, right? Now, to find the perimeter, you need to know the length of each side. So let's see how we can find the length. Now, since you have the coordinate plane and you have the coordinates of A and B, you can say, okay, I can just use my distance formula and find the distance of A to B, B to C, C to D, A to D, and then just sum it up and add up the perimeter, right? Well, you can do that. Or the other thing you can realize is that Basically, so your point, your A point has an X value of negative 5 and Y value of 0, right? So, because it's X negative 5, it basically means that this length from the origin to point A, this length is negative 5, right? Let me make this. This is basically a triangle that you have here, a right triangle, remember? 
So it's a right triangle because the axes are perpendicular to each other. You know this point is A, this point is B, and since I know A is negative 5 comma 0, it means this space of the triangle, which is from the origin to A, this should be negative 5. Similarly, O to B uh, would be 12 since the coordinates of B are 0 and 12, right? So the x value is 0 since it's on the y-axis, but the y value is 12, right? So now you can see that this is basically your 5, 12, 13 right triangle. So the hypotenuse, the side of the parallelogram, is just 13. So it's 13 here, it's 13 here, it's 13 here, it's 13 here, right? So you didn't have to use the distance formula. So you could have used the distance for formula for this pair and this pair, but you don't need to because you know it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle, right? right. Okay, so now you know the sides, length of the sides, the perimeter it would be just 4 times 13, which would be 52. The area here would be 4 times the area of each triangle, right? Now the area of, so there are 4 triangles here, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? If I want to find the area of the whole figure, I basically take the area of one triangle and times it by 4. So all these triangles are same, they are the same lengths. So if I know the triangle area of one triangle, I know the area of all the other triangles. I know the area of the triangle is given by 1 half a times b, where b is your, you can say it's your base, a is the height, right? It's a right triangle, so basically I can take the two legs of the triangle to calculate my area. Right. So now I know the base is 5 or you can take any, any of the legs. So one leg is 5, the other leg is 12, right? 2 times 1, 2 times 6, 6 times 5 is 30, 30 times 4 is 120. Okay. So B is the bigger quantity and is the correct answer here. Okay. So see, you had to use uh, coordinate geometry rules here. That's how you were able to find the length of the legs of the triangle. Um, you could have used the distance formula also, though that's not recommended here since it was simpler to just use um, common principles of the coordinate system to find your lengths. Okay. All right. Let's try another example. Again, a continent comparison question. You have your xy coordinate plane. You have a line that's passing through the origin, and they tell you there's another point on this line 1, 1. There's another point here in the plane, which is not on the line, and it's good by A and B. Okay. So quantity A is the difference of A and B, quantity B is 0. Okay. Now this line that's given by you is a special line. It's the line with each point. So if you take the origin, the the x and y value of origin is what? Is 0, 0. Okay. So this line has origin on it. It has this 1, 1 on it. It is a special line with where you x and y values. Any point on this line, x and y, any point on that line, the x and y values would be same. So like another point on this line would be 2, 2. Another point would be 3, 3. You know, always your x and y values would be same. Right, so, so now you know, if this point was on the line, okay, then A minus B would be zero, right? Because A would be equal to B if this point was on the line, right? If the point was on the line, A would be equal to B and A minus B would be zero. But that's not the case. The point is not on the line, it's somewhere over here. So now the question is, is A greater than B or B greater than A? Okay. They are not equal, that's for sure, um, but which one is greater? So one way to think about it is that what if I have a point on the line whose coordinate, whose x-coordinate is A. So I want to keep the x-coordinate A, x is equal to A, and I want to know what would the point be on this line. So the point on the line would be A, so I want the x-coordinate to be A, the y-coordinate would also be A, right? So here's the corresponding point on the line that corresponds to this a comma b with, with their x components being equal. Right? Now you can compare the y coordinate 
here on the line is A on the line uh, on the point the point given is B and you can see since A is higher than B so A would be somewhere over here and B would be somewhere over here since A is higher than B then A has to be greater than B right so that way you know that A minus B is actually greater than zero and the correct answer is B So a couple of concepts coming into play here. The xy coordinate, the fact that the special line has special significance and the xy values on this line are special, they are always equal, right? And using that concept, you can find the relative relationship between A and B in the point given, okay? So one point I want to emphasize here is that when you have your xy plane, and let's say you have a straight line, um, that's this vertical so a vertical line like this Okay, and this line would be parallel to your y-axis. So whenever you have a vertical line like this any point on this line so so let's see a point Here Point here all these points would have the same x value. So the x value Whatever it is would be same. So the, so the y value would be different. So let's say it's y1 here. Uh, but the x value, so even on the second point, the x value would stay the same, right? So anywhere on a vertical line, the, the coordinate points will have the same x value. Now, if you take a horizontal line, like this, okay, for a horizontal line, the y values are always constant, okay? So your y values here would be just same everywhere on the line. And you can see why this is the case, because the line, any point, so the line crosses your y-axis at this point, right? So any point you have on this line would have the same y-coordinate, right? And the same goes for the vertical line, every line, so the line crosses your x-axis over here, uh, and every point on this line would have the same x-coordinate. So these points, this x, this, this y, they are special, and we'll see in the next part that these are special names. 